Hallelujah. Greetings to everyone. Top of the morning to you. Hallelujah. Want to say that we love you so much in the name of Jesus. And there is just nothing that you can do about that. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan has to flee. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And so we are going to walk on water today. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for going before this pot, babe. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that you utter everything, Lord God, that you desire on today to your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, saints. Again, I want to say that I love you and I miss you uh, dearly. Hallelujah. And we're going to walk on word. I'm going to share some things that the Lord had given me. And I believe the Lord is going to allow us to continue uh, on our series uh, about tithing. Because I don't know if you realize it or not, but tithing is nothing more than intimacy. Tithing is nothing more than intimacy, and the Lord desires for us to be intimate with Him. Hallelujah. He desires to be able to speak through us and to be able to get that proper sound through us. Hallelujah. Tithing. He be, he, he desires to get that proper sound through you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And so, what the Lord gave me a couple of days ago, amen, I... um. I went to a concert, amen, and I know I, I talk a lot against concerts, hallelujah, because many concerts are just a, it's a hot mess, amen, it's just the, it ends up being a hot mess, but this concert I went to, um, uh, uh, Chris Tomlin concert, and I tell you what, my soul was really, really, really blessed, amen, my soul was blessed, and as I begin to the Lord begin to do some things, hallelujah, uh, while I was in the place. Amen. And the things he began to do, uh, I can never really explain it to you. Hallelujah. But he began to do some things in the spirit realm. Amen. And I began to look and begin to and he began to deal with me. Uh and, and we've said this before on Podbeam, but he brought it down, okay, to the to the to the corner realm that people are doors. Amen. People really are doors. In the name of Jesus, God bless you all for coming into the live. And those that view that might come into the listen later, we love you too. But people really are doors. Amen. The people are doors and the lord began to show me this at the chris tomlin concert amen and the lord uh, also let me know that uh in order for a person to walk in a door guess what that person have to know that that is a door they have to be aware that this is a door amen do you agree with that do you agree that you can be in a building somewhere and uh yeah, you could be trying to find a way out and you can be looking at a door and you don't know that it's a door and you will never access that place. Do you understand? You will never access that place, that space, if you don't have the knowledge that it's a door. Oh, the Holy Ghost is on fire already. We, we And a lot of times we have not acknowledged doors in our life. And we do not go through them. And guess what? We look around and we stay in the same place spiritually. You know why? Because we don't access doors that God put in our lives. This pot bean is a door. Do you understand me? And the things that the Lord give us to say are doors. And there are many, they are walking through it and their lives are being changed. And then there are others, not so much. They kind of mostly sit around and spectate and, oh, this ain't that and that ain't this. And they don't understand that it's a door. Hallelujah. And a lot of people, okay, you can get a group of people and they're trying to make it out of some type of building and you'll have some in the crowd that say, this is a door. And you'll have others in the crowd that say, no, it ain't. Let's keep walking. Let's keep walking till we find one. But some is like, yes, it is. There's a door. And others are like, no, it's not. And before you know it, there are some some, they access the door and others they do not in life the lord gives us doors amen and then on the contrary there are other doors okay and just say just say i'm a door now with me being a door 
amen, which I am, with me being a door, there are some that could try to access me. And I could say access denied. Do you understand? I could I could say access denied, but it's not really, I don't have to really say that with my mouth, but I can say that with my spirit. I can say that with my attitude. I can say that with just the way I act and the way I am. You understand? This is why the process of tithing is so important for a believer. Do you understand? This is why the process is so important for a believer. The Lord said he desires for us to be upright. How in the world can we enter a door and it's not upright? Can you, have you ever tried to enter a door and it was leaning over? Mm. We cannot enter doors that are leaning over. This is why the Lord desires for us to be upright. Those gates that are straight upright. Amen. Because this is the uh, this is another way in uh, that a person can access our doors. Our doors can be accessed laying on the ground. It can be accessed over on the side. It has to be upright. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Another another thing that we do not do with doors, we don't be halfway half cocked and then talk about the doors that are upright. Do you understand? Do you understand how pride has really taken uh, a a seat in what called was called uh, following the way of the Lord? There are many that allow pride to take a seat in following the way of the Lord. And what do I mean by pride? A person can see, hey, you know what? You you really have been walking, or you know you really have been doing the work, or you really have been doing this. And and and, and there are those that are healthy, and they're like, you know what? You know, give me a part. Give me some of what you have, please. Or, or is it okay if if I walk through you? Amen. Because ye are doors. Amen. And the Lord desires for us to be upright. And then there are others. They're sick. They're wounded. They're not upright. But then they look at you, and you might be upright. And then they have the nerve to the capacity to talk about you. Do you understand? And it's like. Well, I mean, what do you do with it? There's really nothing you can do with that. You can uh. You can sigh (sighs) and then go on about your business. Do you understand? Because there are too many people that want to access an upright door. Amy, did you hear what I said? There are too many people in this world that would love to access an upright door. But can I tell you something? And I have all the scriptures, but the Lord says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Do you know what the word perish means? He didn't say, he didn't say that uh, my people almost perish. Oh, my people almost perish uh, because of the lack of knowledge. No, he said, my people perish. Okay. For the lack of knowledge. Do you know what perish mean? Perish means to suffer death. Do you know what happens after death? There is no more hope. Do you understand? Do you know what happens after death with those that are not of right? They're weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord didn't say my my people almost perish for the lack of knowledge. He never said. He said my people perish. And do you know what perish mean? It means suffer death typically in a violent sudden or untimely way my people perish for the lack of knowledge and i don't know about you today hallelujah but that really it causes me to sit up straight because the lord didn't say my people almost perish the lord just told me that my people going to hell that's the honest god truth that is what the book says. Amen. A lot of time we're like, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And then the Lord also said, if my people who are called, we're going to visit these scriptures. But if my people who are called by, who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. He said, in turn from there, we go away. If my people who are called by my name, he said, if. If puts it on the table, are you going to do it or you're not? Guess what? Me and you have a choice. And if we choose not to, that if means perishing. And perishing means death in a violent way. And guess what? They still have the title, my people. Better listen. Hallelujah. Better listen on today. Everybody, I'm, I'm God's child. I'm God's son. I'm God's daughter. Can I tell you something? There are a lot of God's son, God daughters. They perish. A lot of God's sons, God daughters in hell. A lot of God's son, God's daughter never made it. Never met him. 
Never. You know why? Because they settle for a title. And that's why a lot of times on this channel, I tell you the title don't matter. You can be a apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, reacher, whoever, but the title don't matter. What is your heart like behind closed doors? How are you treating people behind closed doors? What are you doing behind closed doors? I mean, when the lights are out, what is in your heart? When you lay on your pillow, what are you thinking? Are you devising evil? Are you devising iniquity? Are you having impure thoughts? Are you pulling them down and casting them down out of the atmosphere? Are you bringing them into the subjection of the word? Or are we living in the thoughts that are ungodly? Are we living and moving in ungodly thoughts? These are things that we have to... to we have to understand and we have to we have to deal with ourselves on because the Lord said, if my people, he didn't say my people, they, they are going to realize that they're called by my name and we're going to be happy in the end and everybody's going to be with me. He did not say that. He said, if you call by my name, if you humble yourself, there's a lot of people, they are not humble. They're very prideful. And when they see a door, they don't acknowledge the door. Do you know why? Because the pure in heart sees God. And because the pure heart sees God, there are many people, they walk by you as a door every day and they never access you. Do you know why? Because they're not pure in their heart. And because they're not pure in their heart, they see all manner of evil on you. Hallelujah. Oh, they see you. You wore purple today and you should have wore green or you wore blue and you should have wore orange. You see what I'm saying? And because people are carnal minded, they do not access the doors of God. And a lot of times if they realize you're a door, maybe you're not the right person that they want to walk through. Amen. In the name of Jesus, maybe you're not the right person that I want to walk through. I tell you what, I'm going to keep on walking until I find another door. And a lot of times when you find people like this, they never ever find another door. They'll find doors, but the doors are not upright. And the Lord says, I sent you a door that was upright. You know why you didn't go through it? Because it was a woman. You know why you didn't go through it? Because uh, it was, because it was such and such and it wasn't this one. It was that one. You know why you didn't go through it? Because your heart was prideful. You know why you didn't go through it? Because you had sin and you shaped in iniquity and you would not, you knew you would not come into the washing and the cleansing of the word. You know why you didn't go through it? Because you were prideful. You know why you didn't go through it? Because you had a title and you thought you was the door. But when I sent the door for you to go through to realize how to be a door, you rejected it. Hallelujah. And then you thought I was going to send you another door, but you were wrong. We're going to go to John chapter 10 and verse 9 in the name of Jesus. John chapter 10 and verse 9. Hallelujah. We're going to walk on water on today because I don't know if you know it or not, but you you could be a door. Hallelujah. And, and you could be a door that's linked over. And the Lord is saying, I won't have it. Hallelujah. He wants us upright. Then again, you could be a door that's upright. Then again, you could be a person that's looking for a door. My advice to you is to strip away a pride. My advice is to go under the washing of the water of the word. My advice is to become tithing and become intimate with the Lord. So because those that are pure in heart can see where the doors are that the Lord has planted in our lives. Those that are pure in heart can see the doors and they access the doors. And then those that are not, you know, not so much. Those that are not, they settle with the title, my people. Okay. John chapter 10 and verse nine is going to read like this. It says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Do you know who needs pasture? A, uh, a sheep needs pasture. Amen. And there are many, um, they don't, they say, I don't, I don't really need pasture because I have all these other things, but yeah, a sheep need pasture. And a couple of problems ago, we begin to talk about how do you keep a sheep? And the Lord gives us everything we need. He uh, makes sure our hooves are taken care of, okay? He gives us the food that we need. He gives us the water that we need. He makes sure we have access to salt. He makes sure we have plenty of pasture to live in. He lets us go in and out because we have choice. He don't just keep us in prison. He lets us go in and out because we have choice. We have pasture. We find rest. We know where home is. And he 
said, those that are mine, they hear my voice and they know me. You understand? We hear his voice and we know him. There are many people today, they are confused. Well, I hear the voice, but I don't know if it's God. Baby, you got to pray. Honey, you got to get on your knees and see the face of God because now is not the time to not know when God is speaking through an individual. Now is not the time to not know when God is saying, hear me. Now is not the time to be confused. And now sure ain't the time to be hooked up on if a person is black or if a person is white or if a person is tiger stripe. Now is not the time to be hooked up. If a person is male, if a person is female, now is just not the time to be uh, uh, majoring in a minor and minoring in a major. Because if you didn't know, we are in the 11th hour and there are many doors that the Lord is sending past. Is sending past. And there are those that are touching the doors and there are those that are accessing the doors and then there are those that are just not. They think that there's going to be another door to come in their direction. And it's not. Do you understand? It's not. Many times when the Lord sent a door like this one, many times he sent it because one, he knows people are prideful. Two, he knows people are hurting and they need help. Why would you send a door when I'm prideful? Well, because I don't want you to say there wasn't a door. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, yes, I did send you a door. You know what you did? You rejected it. You know what you did? You shunned it. You know what you did? You were too proud to access it. And yes, you might have the title, my people, but guess what? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. There are many of us, we say, we I am God's people. I am that my people. But we don't allow the Lord to live in us. You understand? And how can I, How do I know when the, the Lord is living in an individual? Because they have depth. Depth. Uh-huh. I gave that three syllables. Depth. Uh -huh. They have depth. What does that mean? That means they can receive the water of the word and, and it can fall on, 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 on good ground. Do you understand? But there are many that have not dug about their trees. And this channel is a digger as well. And we dig about trees over here. And a lot of times it's not fun. A lot of times it shows us the mirror. A lot of times it hurts. You understand? But then there are those that say, Lord, I want you so bad until I'm going to let you dig me. I'm going to let you use this vessel to dig me. I'm not going to get upset with you, Lord, but I'm going to, I need some depth in my life because when the sparrows come, okay, and when those principalities and powers come, I don't want them to be able to spot me and pick me up and eat me anytime they want to. I need to be dug about, Lord. I need roots in the ground. Hallelujah. Lord, I need you to make me that tree, Lord, that is by the waters that cannot be moved, will not, shall not be moved. A tree planted by the waters, never to be moved again. That's depth. Hallelujah. The depth that we need do you have the depth on today can you realize doors that are in your life or do you have pride are you arrogant can you not see and do you judge the door how do you do you find every reason not to go through the door can i tell you something it's not really you those are spirits that don't want you to enter in those are spirits that know hey if you go through that door i can't come and you know what i like having you as a house don't go. Don't go. Hey, look, they don't have on the right shoes. Hey, their shoes are ugly. Hey, look at that shirt. It's ugly. Hey, their hair. I don't like their hair. Don't go through that door. Hey, stop. Oh, don't go. Don't go. Don't go. You know what? Them demons. Demons want to drag you to hell. Demons want to drag me to hell. And they will cause us to major in a minor and minor in a major and just bring up all kind of old stupid things that don't matter. They bring us, bring up a bunch of stuff that don't matter. How are we doors? There are those of us that really allow the Lord to dwell in. There are those of us that really believe, yes, you should be sanctified and set apart. There are many of us that use the title, my people, but we don't stop at there. We want to go to sonship. These are the doors in this hour. Amen. These are the doors in this hour. We're going to go to Second Chronicles. Hallelujah. Chapter 7. In the name of Jesus. God bless you all on today. Love you so much. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles. We'll go over here really quickly. This is just something the Lord is like, yes, you have doors. And then not just that, but when the Lord make when the Lord makes us a door, it's not for us to be prideful. We don't get to pick and choose who comes in. We don't get to pick and choose. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's on both sides. If the Lord says, I'm going to try you as a door, and then we pick and choose who come in. Uh-uh. When, when the lady, when the lady, when the Lord, when Jesus called the lady a dog, and she said, even the dog eat crumbs from the master's table. Jesus, at that point, 
because the you have, there are, there are levels to the scripture. I don't know if you know that or not. There's the beginning level where you can look at the scripture and say, okay, and you can read it and 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 read it. And yes, you can abide by it. But then there comes like growth and maturity. And in growth and maturity, you can read that same scripture. And where when you was a babe, you read it, you 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 interpret it to, to mean this. Now that you're mature in the word, you know it still means that. But now there are terms and conditions in order for you to use that same scripture. Now you know, no, if you're called by my name, then, and then if you humble yourself, then will I give you that pasture. Then will I give you land. Then will I give you, you can eat the good of the land. Do you understand? So there are terms and conditions. When as, as a babe, I can stand right on this. But as we keep growing and as we keep walking, oh, baby, you got terms and conditions. And if you keep walking and you believe that you're going to look at that scripture and you don't have no terms and conditions, and that scripture apply to you, you're wrong. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but let me be the first to tell you, you're wrong. Just because you was a babe, and the Lord was like, yes, yes, good, good, good. That's just like a toddler. You can feed a toddler, and they can make a whole big mess on their clothes, and you don't, you don't spank them, you don't punish them. But as they get of a certain age, you're like, um, you're going to have to do better than that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to do better than that. And then as they get older and older and older, you get more stern and more stern and more stern. And then guess what point you come to? If my people who are called by my name. You guess what point you get to? My people perish for the lack of knowledge. What knowledge? That that scripture you've been standing on ever since you've been saved, now it's got terms and conditions on it. We don't just get we don't get to wake up and look at the scripture the same way we looked at it 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago and think that it still mean that and I don't have to do this and do that. No, that's for them babies. You you got terms and conditions. That's the enemy. That's a decept that's a deception of the enemy to make us feel like we can just still just la 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 la. That devil is a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. John chapter 10. Excuse me. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. And we're going to go to verse 14. And it says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There, do you know there are a lot of people they 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 they, they lay on their pillow on their pillows, which is what the, the, the scripture was saying some on yesterday. They lay on their pillows and they devise evil. What am what am I gonna do? Okay, how am I gonna? Okay, what am I gonna? Okay, how am I going to? And then they get up and practice it. That's Bible. But do you know that's wicked? Do you know that's wicked to do that when it comes to a sister or brother in Christ? It's wicked to do that when it comes to somebody that's not saved. That is not how we live. That is not how we do. That's wicked. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Okay, and seek my face. So before prayer, there has to be a humility. Uh huh, a humility. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not my hand. So, all the prophets out there that are telling you, hey, God, uh, gain is godliness, and God gonna give you this, and God gonna give you that, and God, well, that's for that's a term and condition. You understand? Those that sought my face, those that sought first the righteousness of me, then the other things are added. Do you understand? So, a lot of times it's preached, it's taught, it's witness. God gonna do this, and God gonna do that. God gonna do this, and God gonna do that. God gonna call you to the throne first. God going to humble you first. God going to show you you first. God is going to show you where the doors are first. And then he's going to see, are you too prideful to access the door that he's put in your life? And if you are, you are that my people that perish. And perish means violent death. It doesn't mean, oh, I almost perished. Oh, look, but I'm a my people. Don't get twisted by my people. Don't get twisted by my people. Don't get twisted by your title. Don't get it twisted because there are many of my people that's in hell.
if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. How many people are not willing to turn from wicked ways? Can I tell you something? Uh, we're in the danger zone because there are many people that feel like their ways are just not wicked. You understand? There are many people that feel like their ways are just not wicked. And if you feel like your way is not wicked, why in the world would you turn from it? Where where have we left, Lord? When have we left? When have we did these things? Uh, you 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 you're cursed with a curse. Even this whole nation have robbed me. Well, how have we robbed you? What do you mean? How have we robbed you? In tithes and in offering. Well, what have we said? Your words have been speaking against me. Your words been speaking against me and you have robbed me rob us is rob, robbed you of what the intimacy that i need from you because it's only in the intimacy it's only in us abiding under the shadow of the almighty that we can be pure that we can be washed do you understand that we can be the children of the day the children of the light it's only in the intimacy but when we feel like we're grown enough to just trot on trot we just trot everywhere we want to go we try and do what we want to do. We feel like we big and bad. The Lord says, go on out there. Go ahead. There is a choice every day. There is a choice. Do you access the door? Do you not? Do you shine the door? Do you not? Do we go on in our wicked old cunning ways? Or do we say, Lord, I'm laying this at the foot of the cross. I know this is not right. And even though I feel real good being dirty, oh, dirty, 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 I feel good good being dirty. I feel good making people feel bad. I feel good when I do it. Well, people that feel good making other people feel bad, this is why the Lord don't make you a door to be accessed. You understand? When you make people feel bad and you feel good about making people feel bad, you are one that needs to access a door that the Lord has set up in the in the earth realm. You understand? If you at the bottom of your heart, you like making people feel bad, you need to find a door. So that door can show you how to be a door. It's the, it's the world is full of plenty of people that say they're doors. And it's like, you are? Okay, so so okay, tell me this, because I'm standing back and I'm looking at it. Tell me how do I access you without become becoming reprobate? Tell me how do I access you without becoming an old sinful diabolical creature? Tell me, how do I access you and keep a pure heart and a right spirit? Because every time I look up, you talk about folk. Every time I look up, okay, you you want me to go to the, to the, to the, you telling me it's okay to be drunk every now and then. Every time I look up, if I go through you, you telling me that I got to pay in order for God to love me. I got to pay a thousand dollars in order to get a word from God when I got all these pages in my in my lap that I can get a word from God. And I got to pay you to get a word. If I go through you, what kind of diabolical creature would I be? And what kind of door would I be? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then will I hear from heaven. But I'm not going to hear until then. I'm not going to hear until my people called by my name humble themselves. That's a doozy, saints. That's a doozy. He says, I'm not going to hear until they humble themselves and then after they humble themselves then pray okay then seek my face can i tell you something people are not going to seek the face of god if they're not humble if people are not humble they're always going to seek his hand do you know why because flesh wants stuff flesh goes by the eyesight you understand and flesh is not comfortable until it sees things this is why the lord said walk by faith and not by sight amen in the name of not in the name of jesus he says walk by faith and not by sight amen those that are nigh unto him we understand that it's not a carnal race amen it's 
spiritual. Hallelujah. And we have to humble ourselves first and then pray. And then once we humble ourselves, we'll understand. You don't have a, we don't have the nerve to seek the Lord's hand. We need to seek his face. Amen. We need to seek substance. Where is the substance on today? Are you seeking for substance on today? In the name of Jesus, there are some out there that are seeking for substance. Amen. And you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, seeking for substance. But those that continue to seek the Lord's hand, Mm, selling for the title of my people. Oh, Lord, you promised this and you promised that. And never have I seen the righteous forsaken and the sea begging bread. And you promised me this and you promised me that. You understand? These are the my people. The my people, they always go on the promises of God and they think they don't have to do nothing. The my people, they always think the scripture con- is, is concerning them. They don't step out of their wickedness. These are the my people. The my people, they go on in their way of error. The my people, they do not access doors in their life. These are the my people. And my people, I don't know if you know it or not, but they perish for the lack of knowledge. You understand? The my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And perish don't mean, oh, you almost missed it. Perish don't mean few there be that find it. We, we don't become those few that find the way. We don't become those few that found the straight and narrow. We don't become those few that walk the highway. We become those my people that perished. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. There are many that say Jesus came and he finished it. Jesus finished it. Yep, he did. And now we have forgiveness of sins. See, there's just a stipulation there. Mm. Yeah, there's just a stipulation. He said, if those of us that are the my people are called by his name and if we humble ourselves and if we pray and if we start to seek his face that those 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 ifs right there is just it's just real slippery because there are so many out there they're seeking monetary gain and they're telling people if you sow this you're going to reap if you sow a thousand you're going to reap three million. If you sow this, you're going to read that. These people are not seeking the face of God they're because they're carnal minded and they're going by their sight and not by faith. These people are not, they're seeking the hand of God. They're seeking things in the earth realm that do not have substance. Do you understand? But the Lord said, if you're okay, you're my people, you call by my name. Okay. You humbled yourself. You prayed, you sought my face and you turned from your wicked ways after this. I'll hear from heaven. After this, I'll forgive your sin. After this, I will heal your land. This is Rachel Niagara here. Amen. If you don't want to say Rachel Niagara, hey, your name is too long. You can call me Rain. Amen. If you like. But the way that the Lord gave me to spell my name, which is it's directed um it's h e it's h a excuse me it's r a c h e l which is the which is the way that it's spelled i mean but the lord told me to spell spell mine r a c h e a l amen r a c h e a l and i'm like r a c h e a l says yes because i want the word heal on your name healing and and i believe with with my name amen because i was born melanie amen but the lord changed my name and i thank god for that and in him giving me rachel niagara is just so many things that he began to show me about who he has made me in the process because melanie means darkness and in the process of that darkness in the whole 39 years of going through that darkness the lord taught and showed me so many things 
Amen. Then I come on here and I may not just give you the whole complete testimony because I wouldn't be able to do it in one setting. But there are many, by the, the by the way that the Lord has given me to teach, by the way that the Lord has given me to reach, by the scriptures that the Lord has given me to uh, understand and interpret by him. All glory be to him. By him giving me the attitude that I have in the in in in, in, in however way that I come. By him doing that, he took all of that darkness and he used it for his marvelous light. He's using it for his marvelous light. And now that he's brought me out of darkness, then all the things I've learned, this is where the wisdom comes from. It comes from God who led me through the valley of the shadow of death. And in death, I begin to look at the Lord and I stop fearing evil. I stop fearing evil doers. I stop fearing those that allow the enemy to abide within. I stop fearing circumstances. I stop fearing places and spaces and area codes. And I begin to understand that the, that the Lord has power above all power. There, if any of God be for me, who can be against me? Do you understand? I begin to understand and the Lord begin to show me that I am walking with you. Do you understand? And when the Lord assures you that he is walking with you, there is not a place in this world you will not go. There's not a place in this world. You know why? Because you under you have the understanding that God. God is with me. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with me. He walks with me. He's shown me. He's told me. He's confirmed every day of my life that he's with me. Every day when one door closed, another one open. Every day he confirms. Is this your testimony? Is he confirming every day to you that I'm with you? Every day. That I'm proud of you every day. Every day. Hallelujah. And with that being said, we have to be so planted in the word that winds that come cannot move us. Winds may blow. The billows will roar. But can it move you? Can I tell you something? It will move you. If you are building your house on sand, it will move you every time. But if you're building your house on a firm foundation, you shall not be moved. You understand? You will not be moved. You will not. You shall not be moved. And there, there's been a time in my life, and I and I and I'm I'm there and I'm, you know, I'm I'm holding on to the word of God. And I look because we're we're all the time soul searching and i look and i and i'm like lord i was listening to a a minute a a pastor and i was like lord if i continue listening to this i'll i'll look up one day and i wonder where where in the world have i what happened how did i get way out here you know and there are many people they wake they're waking up today even today and they're like, Lord, how did I get here? How did I get to a place where I don't desire intimacy with you anymore? Because I, I'm going to get, I'm going to get what you saying to me at church. I don't, where did I get to a place where I don't desire intimacy with you anymore? Where do I get, where did I get to a place where the things that I have determine how blessed I am? When, when did I get here? Many people wondering, when did I get to this place? It comes with us going too long without soul searching. Amen. It comes with us going too long without soul searching. Amen. Without soul searching. I was talking with the individual on yesterday and they were saying that you know, it it doesn't matter where, you know, it seems like it doesn't matter where they go. They always end up back at the same place. Amen. And the Lord led me to say, 
Well, we, you know, we, we, you just have to check your wings. What do I mean by check your wings? You know, sometimes our wings can be clipped a certain way. Do you know how when you throw a horseshoe? You can throw that horseshoe. You can have the most muscles in the world. You can throw that horseshoe as hard as you can. And guess what that horseshoe is going to do? It's going to come right back. Isn't that what they say? Is it a horseshoe or what is it called? The thing that boomerang? What is that? It goes out and it comes right back. Well, a lot of times we can observe, we can examine, examine ourselves and realize that we've allowed our wings to be clipped by people. Do you understand? Do you know how you know people can clip your wings? And where you were you trying to go out because you know the Lord is calling you to go out, but you realize you end up right back at the same place. Check we 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 have to check our wings. Because when the Lord comes, he brings restoration and he brings us to lean upon him. He tells us, I don't care where you end up in life. You always have that firm foundation, which is me. So a foundation is not always a place. Do you understand? And a lot of times this has been taught. Oh, this is the place and that's the place. No, foundation is not always a place. A foundation is spiritual. You understand? Because there could be people that come and snatch you up and take you off on the ship and you can end up in Timbuktu. You're still going to have to have that firm foundation. You understand? You may not end up in the same place, but you still have to have the same foundation. And if it happened, then, then let the Lord be glorified. Hallelujah. Let him be exalted and use what the Lord is giving you to be a door for other people. Amen. Have your wings been clipped. Do have you been the Lord throw you out and we come right back? Why is that? Why is it that we feel like when when we're when we're thrown out of a fellowship and when I say thrown out, I mean thrown out. Do you know how people can squeeze you out of a fellowship? They can act like you are the one that don't matter. They can act like you are the one that none existed. They can act like you are the one that's always wrong. They can act like it's just you. The word comes to just kick you, to just punch you, to just just put your light out. You understand? And this is how a this is how a fellowship they, they they don't want you. They do not want you. You understand? And they show you they don't want you. And they tell you by the word they preach that they don't want you there. But you know what you do as a sheep? You try to abide. You try to love anyway. You try to care anyway. You try to just still be there every time. Every time the Lord used them to show you did that they these folks don't want you here. Can't you see it? But because we allow people to clip our wings, we're scared to go out and access the people that really do want God. They really do want to access you as a door. We're scared to go out. Why are we scared to go out now? Because the wings have been clipped. What do I mean by wings being clipped? We feel like this fellowship right here is where it is. And if I go out there, I'm going to perish. Can I tell you something? You might fall under the title of my people that perish. Because with that mindset and with that frame of thinking, you are not depending on God. You are depending on people. And let me tell you something. You're cursed with a curse, sweetheart. You're cursed with a curse. You know why? Because you've robbed God. How have I robbed you, Lord, in tithing and in offering? You have not tithed yourself to me, and you have not offered me a pure praise. And how do I know you haven't did it? Because you're not being intimate with me. Because if you were intimate with me, I would give you a pure heart and a right spirit. Do you know what a pure heart and a right spirit is? Is you knowing me as Abba Father? Is you knowing me as your battle axe? Is you knowing me as your the wheel in the middle of the wheel? Is you knowing me as the rock of ages is you knowing me as the great I am is you knowing me as God is you knowing me as God to become intimate with me I pull the scales off I anoint your eyes with eye self so that you may see that the places that your feet tread you already have the authority in that region in that town in that country in that city 
in that state, in that area code, zip code, you name it. You have the authority. And I give you power over all the power of the devil. And nothing, the gates of hell can never prevail. Never, 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 never prevail over a son or daughter of God. So what do you choose today? Do you just choose to be a my people? Because my people are perishing every day. My people are choosing not to access the door. My people are making a sound, not sound decision. It's sound because the carnal realm has a carnal mind. And the carnal mind is very intellectual. And the carnal mind will say, well, you don't have this and you don't have that. Why should I listen to you? That's a carnal mind. And you'll you'll be around carnal minded people all day, every day. And they think just like this. You know why? Because they're not tied and they're not an offering to God. They're cursed. Leaning on the arms of man, cursed. Okay. And then sometimes we feel like this is the fellowship. And then if I leave here, I'm going to perish. And if I leave here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it. If I leave this pastor, if I leave this church, if I leave this fellowship, I'm not going to make it. And the Lord is saying, if you stay, you ain't going to make it. You know why? Because we have the wrong attitude. Many times, God bless you. Many times we in fellowship. We don't even, we don't, we don't, we don't serve God. Right. Because we begin to serve who's in the fellowship, who's the leader, who's the preacher, teacher, preacher. We begin to serve them as God. And the Lord is saying the whole time I sent them in my stead. Why? Not to call you to them. But you know what their 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 position was to do was to draw you back to me, to put your hand in my hand, not your hand in their hand. They can't do nothing for you. They can't do nothing for you. They can't save you. They can't cleanse you. They can't wash you. They can't make you fresh. They can't make you new. And they sure don't have a heaven a hell to put you in. They don't have a heaven a hell to put you in. I don't have a heaven a hell to put you in. But the Lord says there are plenty of my people. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Okay, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. There are plenty of my people. They think that they're abiding in me and they're not. Amen. And the enemy is picking them off and giving them certain scriptures to stand on. But the Lord is saying they don't even apply to you. Do you understand that that right there got terms and conditions for you now? Do you understand that you're in a different place? Did you say that you've been in this for three and four and five years? Yeah, three and four and five years. If you've been in it three and four and five years, that first scripture you read, it's already got terms and conditions. My God, if you get on the job and they say, well, the policy, the insurance policy, it kicks in a year after you've been on the job. Why is it in the army of God? We feel like the policy don't kick in. Uh, you know, we feel like the policy kicks in and the terms and condition, it, 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 it's, a, it's a ways off. The terms and condition is when we've been 60, 70 years saved. And even when we've been 60, 70, 80 years saved, the terms and conditions is still through forgiveness of, of Jesus. And we're fine and you know just not nah, it don't work like that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge what knowledge my people what well, wait 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 okay we looked up parish Now let's look up destroyed because he didn't say almost destroyed. He did not say almost destroyed. He said he used the word destroyed. Now, what does destroyed mean? All right. Because he said my people. Now, there's a title that we have. We all have that my people thing going on. What does destroyed mean? Put an end to the existence of by damaging or attacking it. Put an end to or Put an end to the existence of. Now, my question today, because this is a come to Jesus. This is a come to Jesus pot being this morning. My question today is this. Do you, has the devil deceived your mind to, to make you feel like you can keep going? And then some kind of way at the end, everything is going to be fine? Mm-mm. Because when he said my people are destroyed, and destroyed means destroy, 
destroy means put an end to the existence of. Do you know when there's an end to the existence of us? Um, there is nothing else to do but be judged by God. There is nothing else to do but stand with the books open and receive our destination for eternity. And right here, he says, my people are destroyed. The end of existence. How can the word my people and destroy be in the same scripture? How can it be in the same verse? How can how can you put these two things together? The Lord has been telling us since from the beginning of the time we started breathing in this temporary world that you can choose a title all you want and we can walk like we walking in a realm in a greater dimension in God and all the time we can be that my people that is destroyed we can be that my people that's literally waiting for destruction you know why because we won't turn from our old wicked ways in the way we see stuff, the way we see stuff, the way we interpret, and the way we want it to be. You know why I want it to be like this? Because it makes me comfortable. Because I'm comfortable. I want it like this. But my question is, does it ever matter what God wants? Does it ever matter to us what he desires? Does it matter? Does it even matter? Have you chose to be a my people and are you good with that? Are you good with just being that my people? Are you good with that title? Because can I tell you, my people are burning in the lake of fire. My people. We are the people. We are the children of Israel. What type of people are you? Are you that my people that's waiting to be destroyed? The door, the Lord sends the door in your life. Are you too prideful to access the door? Do you see the building burning? And you need a door. But you don't even have the knowledge that that's a door that leads to outside. That's a door that leads to life. That is a door. The Lord literally brought a door in my life. Nah, nah. I got enough knowledge right here. I got enough. I got enough. I got, okay, 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 okay. We are reading verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I don't believe that there's anyone out there rejecting knowledge that they're whatever color they are or rejecting. So what knowledge is the Lord talking about? He's talking about the knowledge that we've been talking about in this series. That he desires that intimacy and nothing else will do. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. The Bible says, I will also reject thee, which is at the end of tithe. Thee. He says, because you reject knowledge, I reject you. What is knowledge? Knowledge is that door. Knowledge. When I went to that concert, Chris was a door. Was a door. There are all different types of doors, you understand, that you will come across in life. Every door is not a door that leads to the kingdom, but these are doors that we access that helps us with kingdom. You understand? Help us with king. What door is it? What door is it? Have you stopped and took the time to realize what doors are in your life? Some doors you just don't walk through. Because if you go through them, you will end up destroyed. You will end up on my people 
that is okay with being destroyed because you feel like that my people is going to make it in and they're not. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget your children. Because you have forgotten the law of God, I'm not just going to forget you. I'm going to forget your seed. Lord, have I forgotten your law? Have I forgotten to be separate and set apart? Have I forgotten to seek your face? while it may be found to call upon you, while you may answer. Have I forgotten, Lord, that you are the door and that no man can come up any other way and there'll be a thief and a robber if they do? Have I forgotten that you have made us children of the day, children of the light? Have I forgotten that I have sisters and brothers in Christ? Have I forgotten that those that do the will of my father The same as my mother, sister, or brother. Have I forgotten that you went in and turned over the money changers table because they were selling spiritual stuff to your people? Have I forgotten to build my house on the rock? And have I been so comfortable with my feet in the sand that I want to build my house in it? Have we forgotten today? Have we forgotten that heaven and earth will pass away? But this word is the only thing that's going to be standing against the testing of times. Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten that the books will be open and we will be judged? Have we forgotten that we're pilgrims passing through this land? Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten that we are those five virgins that are supposed to be wise? That as we're going through the land, we're gathering oil so that we may stand against the wiles of the enemy. Have we forgotten? If my people who are called by my name If they will humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face and then turn from their wicked ways, then you may be wondering, well, who who is the Lord hearing? Who is he hearing? Whose sins is he forgiving? And you know what? I I would pacify you in that place. Amen. I would pacify you in that place. But the Lord is not leading me to do that today. He's not leading me to pacify you. Uh, He's not leading me to pacify me. He's leading me to Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. And verse 13. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7. Because too many times we've been pacified and we think we fine. I tell you, we not. Who we not? We not. We not. Too many times. That's the problem. We've been pacified. Do you know that? Mm, 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 the doctor will tell you when you take your infant in, and you, the, the baby still has that pacifier in his mouth, and he's one and two years old. The doctor will tell you, you you make his teeth when they come in, they'll rot because that passy. That's not good. They only need that for so long, and then you get that pacifier that, out that mouth. Don't don't let them keep sucking that pacifier. It's not healthy. Well, there are many people. There 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 they there there are many leaders. They give passies to people. Yeah, they have a passy line. Who who forgot their passy today? Okay, come over here. I have passy. Yeah, there's your passy. There's your passy. And because we've been pacified so much for so long, we have a bunch of rotten people. 
You understand? Rotten spirit. People, we love people, but the spirits are rotten. What does that mean? I mean like spoiled rotten. Not rotten, you can't eat it, but you really can't eat it. Because if you eat from rotten people, rotten spirited people, they're going to make you feel like every and anything go. And you know why? Because God loved you and Jesus came for the remission of sins. Yes, he did come for the remission of sins. And he's coming for that my people that did really humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek the face of God. That's that's Jesus came for those. He came for all of us collectively, but there are many that have rejected the knowledge of why he came. And they just want the, well, he came. Yeah, he did come. But there are those that qualify. I don't have to qualify for the blood. If my people, my people do perish for the lack of knowledge. My people do perish. What does perish mean? Violent death. Well, after death, I'll get it right. Mm -mm, It don't work like that. Well, sister, this sounds like the end. Hello, it is the end. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Well, sister, you're preaching it like it's the end. I feel like it's the end. Well, I'm so glad you came today. Yes, 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 you got it. You got it. Now, my question is, have we prepared ourselves for the end? Because this is the end. Have we prepared ourselves for heaven and earth to really, yeah, bye-bye, pass it, we'll pass away. But the word standing, are you in the habitation of the word that will not fall? Like Rahab's house, are you on the wall? No pacifiers today. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. You may say, why did you share with us the spelling of your name, sister? It's about Jesus. Because he let me. Because he allowed me to. Because he led me to. Because it's just another shaking. Have you ever been asleep and somebody was trying to wake you up and they were shaking you? You're like, We don't understand the doors that are in our life. It's just another plea. It's just another call. It's just another, Lord, a a lot of them, they're not hearing it. They're not getting it. Sometimes it's not for people to get it. Sometimes people have made their own choices. They made their decision. Sometimes. Matthew 7, 13. Says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Now, my question to you is, is your preacher, teacher, reacher teaching the word where it's wide and everybody can come in? Because if your preacher, teacher, reacher is teaching the word and making it wide, you might want to you might want to rethink that. If they're teaching the word in a way. That makes it wide and everybody can come in. It's too late to sugarcoat it. It's too late in the evening and the sun is going down. And it's too late to make it cute. If they're teaching it in a way and making it wide, you can bring you and all your hips inside. You you, you might want to find something of substance. You, you might want to throw your pet. You make the choice to throw your pacifier in the trash. When my children were little, do you know I made them throw their own pacifiers away? Yeah. 
come on. Okay, come to the trash. Oh, they cried. Okay, now I tell them. Okay, throw it in there. Oh, okay, mama, no, mama, no, mama, no, mama, no. It's okay. It's okay. Put it in there. I know, I know, I know. Now, put it in there. And I know, I know, I know. You can keep it. Uh-uh. Put it in there. Then they throw it in there. And I grab them and I hug them. Good job. Good job. Good job. You did good. Come on, let's go get a lollipop. Let's go get let's go get a, a, a popsicle. Come on, you did good. But do you know what that did for them? That let them know. When I get the feeling that I want that passy. When I'm sitting down under the air conditioner and I just have on my pamper and a shirt. And I feel good. I don't even have on no socks. And it's good, good in the neighborhood. And I feel like the only thing that would top off this moment is a nice, cool pacifier. In their minds, they know. I threw that away. Yes, you did throw it away. And it's not coming back. That is how we have to do with our wicked mindset. Lord, I'm leaving this at the cross. I'm leaving this at the altar. And when I feel like being wicked and sly and cunning and, 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 and smart in my own way, I realized, no, I left that at the altar. And do you know what I do when I leave stuff at the altar that's been a major part of me? Do you know living a certain way for 39 years? That's, that's huge. Like, how do you stop being a person? How do you do that? It takes, it's nobody but God. Nobody but God can turn one thing into another. Do we believe in the potter and the potter's wheel? So when I feel like picking up old ways, old habits, old mindsets, what do we do? What do I do? I remember that I left that at the foot of the cross. And you know what I asked the Lord? Lord, Will you replace that in will you replace that part inside of me? Because I don't know whether or not you really left something that was a part of you at the foot of the altar before. I don't know if you really stripped off a part of you and literally left it at the altar, literally gave it to the Lord. But I'll tell you how it feels. It feels like a void inside. You know why? Because that place has been there. That's been there for years, years. And then you wake up one day and the Lord give you the strength to strip that off. You don't think you're going to feel like a like something's void on the inside. You know you have the Lord, but then there's this empty spot. You know what I asked the Lord to do? Lord, will you please fill that with something that you see that I need? Lord, I need you to fill this place. And do you know that I cry? How I cry. I cry. And I say, Lord, I'm fiending for that. Lord, I'm missing that. I'm needing that. Lord, and I know that's not for me. You don't desire me to have that. So, Lord, I need you, Lord. Fill this place. Fill this place. Fill this place, Lord. Fill this space. And whether you know it or not, in the darkness is where God dwells. In thick darkness. Amen. And in that thick darkness, guess what? The Lord begins to show us, those of us that choose to turn from our wicked ways, he begins to show us that in this place, me and you will find intimacy. And in this place, you will know that I am your God and you are my people. In this place, you will know that that there is none above me. In this place, you will know that I've given you dominion, that I've given you authority to tread over the lions, over the adders, and over the young lions and the dragons shall you trample under your feet, that I've given you the authority in Christ and that he's come to wash away your sins and there is therefore now no condemnation. In those that are in Christ Jesus, you love me, there is no condemnation. Those that will let them come in this place, you're going to find that intimacy and in the intimacy, I give you the things that you need. And then you become the tithe and you begin to 
offer me a pure praise. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour out a blessing and I'm going to fill that empty void that you think you have. All the things that you pulled off, I'm going to fill it up. I'm going to fill it up so much. I'm going to fill you up so much with me until you're going to be like a water fountain that is sprouting. You're not going to be able to contain it to yourself. You're not going to be able to keep it to yourself. You're going to share it with those that will not reject it. My people, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what wicked ways? The, the way we think. We think that we're just, we think that, oh, we're, we're fine the way we are. We're fine. The way is wide. The, the way is wide. And Jesus came and he, he is not wide. It's narrow. It's a straight. My sister asked me, what did Rachel Niagara mean? <sighs> Rachel, it has many name, many meanings, but ew, e w w e. That's a sheep. Niagara. One of the meaning of Niagara is neck. Another meaning is straight, S-T-R-A-I-T. When the Lord gave me this name over, over almost, almost a year ago, maybe nine months ago, I began to research like the meaning. And in the meaning, I found myself in the meaning. In the meaning, I found who I am. In the meaning, I found who God made me all the time through the darkness. In the meaning of the name that God gave me. In this meaning, I found me. In this meaning, I found what the potter made again another on the potter's wheel. In the meaning. Because the way I teach the scriptures and the way I try my best to live these scriptures is straight. There is no other way. Verse 13 says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Some may say, well, you teach the word where it seems like ain't nobody going to make it. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Now, I believe there are some out there that wants me to look up the definition of few. It says a small number. Few. A small number. Definition 2 says used to emphasize how small a number is. As a noun, the minority of people, the elect. There are people that are elected to enter in. Do you believe that? And these elect are doors. And those that access the doors can and will be saved. Those who take heed 
to the warnings and to the directions. But then there are those that they 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 say no the way is wide and you're only preaching to, well only a few well well yeah that's scripture because can I tell you something in this world there's not a lot of people that are gonna make up their minds to go that straight way. It's not a lot of people that's gonna say, you know what? It's worth it. Instead of living this temporary life, I'm gonna fix my mind and my sight on the straight way because that's eternal. Do you know why? Because there's a spirit of Esau in the land. Esau sold his birthright for temporary. Getting on pie bean, I don't come on to play. Sometimes we have fun, we laugh, we talk, we sing. But the bottom line is I'm not really an ambassador. I'm not really a my people, quote, unquote. I'm not really a daughter of Zion. If I don't speak in a way to let us know and to keep reminding us that time is winding up and we're not going to be here forever. I can't teach this way that is wide because that's 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 a lie. Yeah, there is a way that seem right, but the end thereof is death and destruction. There's a way that seem right, and then there's a way that is right. The way that seem right, that way is called the broad way. And the way that is right, that way is called the narrow way. And the Bible says, few there be that find it. So if your teacher, preacher, preacher, whoever you're listening to is preaching it the wide way, you might want to reconcile with the Lord. You might want to be reconciled. You might want to go back to your first love and you might want to become that those tithes and the offering that he's desiring. And you might want to get into your intimate place and tell the Lord you want a one-on-one. Tell him you don't need no man in the middle. Tell him you want a one-on-one. Because this is the last day. And we're not going to be able to stand up there and say, my preacher, teacher, preacher told me this. The Lord is going to say, I told you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You weren't scared because you went through the wide gate. You were fancy free and did what you felt like you wanted to do and said what you felt like you wanted to say. You're fancy free. Fifteen says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are ravening wolves. What is ravening? Say, you shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. You ain't supposed to be looking at me. You're supposed to be looking at God. I am looking at God. He told me to look at your fruit. This is how we talk in the last hour. This is how we talk in the last day. In the first day, people might then talk like that. Men, you know, and people might then talk like that. But we're in the 11th hour now. This is how we talk. And a lot of times it goes over as disrespectful. No, it's not disrespectful. This is my life. This is my eternal life we're talking about. This is the life of my seed we're talking about. No, I want to know where the fruit is and I want to see it. You can't do that. That's bishop. You can't talk to bishop like that. You, you, you follow bishop if you want to. What does revening mean? What does revening mean? Because in this time, the Lord is getting us prepared to meet him. And when in meeting him, it has nothing to do with leaders. In meeting him, it has nothing to do with nobody else. It's got something to do with you and God. That's it. It's just like waiting in the waiting room and you're waiting for that doctor to call you and they come and they open the door. Kelly, Kelly Smith, and you get up and you're walking to the back. You don't know what the doctor report going to be. You get up and you walk to the back. Michael, Michael Corpse, get up and walk to the back. Dose. Dos and Gabbana, 
Louis, is Louis Vuitton here? It's your turn. Just naming these names. If 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 if, if, if the Lord called Louis Vuitton, if he called those single bar, and, and there's these are literal people. Do you, you know what in your in your in your heart of hearts, do you think that they have a good report? Do you think the doctor gives them a good report? I, I wouldn't think so. You know why? Because it's carnal. There is no substance in it. It's the same way with us. Is there substance in you and your name? Is there substance in it? Have we allowed to allow the Lord to give us substance? Have we allowed him to wash us and make us those tithing and offering and allow him to cleanse us? Have we let the Lord do this? But when he call our name, your name, it just sounds like substance. Are we chasing substance? Virtue. Ravening. Ravening means a ferocious wild animal. Extremely hungry and hunting for prey. The Bible says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. They're looking to eat a prey, a P-R-E-Y. And you know what might classify you as a P-R-E-Y? Somebody who do not have a relationship with God. Somebody that is not intimate with God. Somebody that does not know the voice of God. My sheep, they know my voice. Somebody that don't know when the Lord is talking. This will classify you as a prey. You know why? Because you're not under the shadow of the Almighty. So that means I'm protected. What is the Lord asking us for? In order for us to undergo the straight and narrow and that highway, their relationship with him. And in that relationship with him, he's going to start stripping off and putting on. Stripping off what's not what he, what he don't want you to have and putting on what he do want you to have. And when he gets done, you're going to be what he desires. When he gets done, you may not be what nobody else in this world wants. Because if they call the the master of a house of bells and bulls, what more should they call you? But when he gets done with you, you're going to be what he wants. And my question to you is this. When Jesus comes back for his bride, would you rather be what he wants? Or would you rather be with some of the same folks that's going to be standing in the line waiting to be judged? Won't. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruit. You stop walking around like you blind, you hear me? Open up your eyes. If you're seeing it, you're seeing it. Too many years I walked around with rose-colored glasses on. And you know where it got me? It got me wondering which way was up. But when the Lord stripped those glasses off my face and anointed my eyes with eye salve, I understood. No, fruit is fruit. No, a lemon is a lemon. I know how a lemon looks, and that's a lemon. That's an orange. No, that's an apple. No, that's a pear. I know a pear that's not an apple. It's a pear. I know a pear when I see a pear. These days, well, it's not really that. Cover your brother. Cover your sister. Be a fruit inspector. It's the 11th hour. Yes, we pray for people, but you better know what fruit dropping from that tree. You better know when folks telling you, we don't want you. We don't want you here. You better listen. You better listen. You open up your ears. Or you're going to be destroyed. For lack of knowledge. I'm giving you the knowledge. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth what kind of fruit? Evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, 
neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Do you know why the Lord is talking about leadership so much? Because he's cutting a lot of leaders down. They've made choices in life and it had nothing to do with God. It had to do with themselves and it had to do with what felt good. They begin to teach the way as wide. And they became an enemy to the cross because the Lord says that straight is the gate. And there is a way that seemed right, but the end of that way is destruction. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way. What's narrow? That means I'm going to keep cutting until it ain't nothing to cut. But when you find somebody like me and others that are cutting until there is nothing else to cut, you find those telling us that we're extremists. You're too extreme and you're making it where can't nobody walk it. Well, we're not supposed to be walking it because it's by faith. Flesh ain't going in. Pacifiers, pacifiers not going in. Flesh not going in. My way not going in. Your way not going in. There is one way. And he said, I am that way. I'm the truth and I'm the light. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. What if the will of your father is to move and go to Timbuktu? What if the will of your father is to stop, refrain, go the other way? What if the will of your father is to leave your family? What is the, what is, what is the will of your father? Do you know? Do you care? Do you think the will of your father is in your pastor, your teacher, your reacher, your leader? That's what you think? If I were you, I would get on my knees and say, Lord, what is your will for my life? Because in the end, there is nobody to blame. Amen. In the end, there is no one to blame. Amen. Nobody to blame. We read. Um, John 10 and 9, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, Hosea 4 and 6, Matthew, we're over here now. Let's read 8 and 12. And this right here, I'm going to end on this note. It says, and I shall unto, I shall say unto you. And I pray that you're walking on water with me, amen, because it's good for all of us to see and it's good for all of us to know what the Lord is saying. And it's good for you to know that the Lord wants us to be ready. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall say and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is what he said. Many shall come, right? And shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. All right. This is what he said. But the children of the kingdom, this is the my people. The children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The children of the kingdom shall be cast out in outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You understand? So with that being said, saints, I just want you to understand that the, the Lord is not playing with us. Amen. We may be, we can be God's people all day, but the Lord, he's just simply, he's simply just not. He, he, he's, there is no more tolerance for foolishness. You know how the Lord used to wink on us. Well, there is no more tolerance. We are literally in the last days and the Lord says, prepare the people to meet me. This is what he's saying in this hour. Prepare the people to meet me. Prepare them to stand before me. Prepare them to have oil because I'm going to be looking to see if they have it. I want you to prepare the people for me. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a song I want to share with you in closing. Life was filled with guns and war And all of us got trampled on the floor And I wish we'd all been ready The children died, the days grew cold A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind The sun has come and you've been left behind A man and wife asleep in bed She hears a noise and turns her head He's gone I wish we'd all been ready Walking up a hill, one disappears and one's left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. Filled with bombs and guns, heaven help the little ones who died. 